I like to show a lot of contrast in our no-till cover crop. We're in a corn bean rotation, and uh, we use mostly cereal rye behind everything every year. And this is um, um, this is on um, off of Bing Maps, bird's eye view. And I just wanted to show the cereal rye cover crop and how it stops erosion compared to the fields to the south. This is a no-till operation. We're getting a lot of erosion and then a full tillage where we're getting gullies. So if I had one, <laughs> if I had one slide to show, that's a third-party slide. That's why, why we do it. I like to show a lot of contrasting pictures for local farmers so they can see the difference, so it's easier for them to understand. I'm in southeast Iowa, just 10 miles south of Interstate 80. What we do is uh, just simply come through and in the spring, spray our rye. We plant corn into it. We'll also drill soybeans, do a little bit of side dress, come back in the fall. We're combining. We've got that drill in the field the very same moment we're harvesting. Do a little bit of um, ammonium sulfate, let that rye grow, and we also have quite a bit of manure on the farm. We have a lot of swine manure and then a lot of uh, poultry manure too, so we're doing it. And we've been at this a long time, and a lot of farmers come to me and say, well, what could I do? You know, we have train wrecks with cereal rye. And I said, well, what could we do to improve that? And I just try to break it down. I said, you know, make sure you got that planter set right. We're going to have to manage our nitrogen differently. And I think Barry covered that pretty well in the carbon nitrogen ratio. We've got, we've got corn competing for nitrogen with the rye as it decomposes and so forth. So um, we just got to learn how to manage that nitrogen. And like Dwayne mentioned earlier, I think we can start to reduce the amount of nitrogen we use. You know, that's the good thing. I can start to cut this back. Um, insects is a problem. We still are using insecticide. Maybe what I'm learning from this conference is maybe we can cut that insecticide back with our diversity. Maybe we won't need that. But I think the hardest one is it just takes a little bit of time for that soil profile to change and develop pore space. And it doesn't happen overnight. And I think a lot of farmers get into train wrecks when they first try to no-till with rye cover crops. And this, that soil just hasn't converted fast enough. And I'll kind of show you some examples of what we're doing. This here is just, when I say get your planter set right, this here is the dividing line of a field that was planted this spring. This is a rye cover crop that's been sprayed and decomposed. This is the dividing line between our our corn planter and a plot planter put in by Iowa State. <laughs> and this was planted one hour after we used our planter. So you can just see the difference. And they probably left 40 bushels on the table when they left that field. That was the only difference, was just a corn planter. So that's what I say. You've got to get things set right. Be care careful of college professor. Kevin. Yeah, well, I said, I, I didn't mention SD. <laughs> well, we have those too. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, also. Yeah, our nitrogen program, we're using a little bit of ammonium sulfate in the fall, and a little bit of anhydrous, quite a bit of manure, two different kinds of manure. We're getting some nitrogen on with the planter in two different places, and then we side dress. Not every acre every year on that, but we're, I think what I have to learn is where can I start cutting this back and when and. Don't, don't cut down on your side band of, of nitrogen. Okay, this one, uh, the, the side dress one right up here. Yeah, I noticed those, those fertilizer openers on there. It was, that's a good thing. Yeah, so that's, we're, we're still learning there. So we started back in the 70s. That was 1978, that one picture right here. When we first started, we had no idea what we were doing. Other than the extension director of the SCS in those days said, you need to start doing this. And we had really good leadership in our county. And they said we had to start doing it. And then that's our planner from the day. 36 years later, that's me and my dad. He's in his late 70s, and he embraces no-till just as, as much as anybody. He lost the plow in the 50s. and. Uh, pretty much a go-to guy. The first thing he'll ask me when I get home is, well, what did Dwayne say? You know, <laughs> that's the first thing he'll, he said, well, what did Beck say? So, uh, we're seeing a little bit of increase in organic matter over time from 2004, 8, 12. We're, we're starting to pick some up. Not every field does this. We also know we're probably getting some of this from the manure too, but the manure and the, and the cereal rye work good. So we are increasing organic matter. I just show this, this is um, organic matter by grid. I just like to show what our fence rows were. So <laughs> that's, we're roughly half of what we were, you know, and we know that, and so we need to get that stopped. This is from 5,000 feet in my community, just showing the rye cover crop. See this kind of pattern here? That had corn in there last year, and so I was, where we picked the corn out, I was just drilling rye, you know, so I'll drill rye anywhere I can. And this is just different forms of senescence here. This field's probably been planted. So that's my neighborhood. Everything we have is, is covered with cereal rye to stop erosion. Um, the local soil scientists in my area, Jason Steele, and uh, our state geologist happened to take some 
uh, microscopic pictures of our soil. Of course, this on the left here is of my soil of 36 years no-till, about 10 years of cover crop, versus here's an aggressively tilled field. And this is from about two inches below the surface, and it's just, you're looking at really about a, a centimeter square. And basically is there's just more pore spaces and larger, larger pore spaces. And it would be just like the textbook example, like you read in the books. This would be mine, and this would be the aggressively tilled field. So we, it, it's doing what we think it should do, and um, we're just getting increased infiltration rates. It makes our soil more resilient. Here's a real life picture of the rye cover crop. It just, it's dry. This was probably taken in March, April. This is a field across the road, same soil type, you know. We can plant just as sooner, sooner than the tilled guys. You know, that's they're just, about, just a lot drier. We can go quicker, a lot more stable. We can hold up heavy planters, grain carts better. That just speaks for itself. You're not sure what it is, but when you see it, you know it. You know, that's just good. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I mean, how long would it take for 5,000 gallons of uh, manure to soak away on something like that? I mean, five minutes, you know? That's us putting on 5,500 gallons of swine manure, and I'm there drilling rye, and primarily trying to experiment and stop the ammonia loss. You know, we're just trying to, what can we get away with? We don't know. And um, I don't like injecting manure. I like to surface apply it. But we have to work through our DNR laws and you know all the things that go with it. But that's what we're doing. We're <laughs> we're drilling five minutes right behind 5,500 gallon of manure, and I think that kind of shows what the um, um, infiltration rates are doing. And I'm just going to go through a series of slides showing what resilient soil does. This is after a two-inch rain in April a few years ago. Same rain just down the road. We're just going to go back and forth. You can see the good, the good and the bad, different in soil types. I've got two fields here in the background. This has probably been planted. This will go to beans. This is a field that doesn't have any cover. It does now. He's starting to catch on. This was back in the 80s, 83 when I was a crop scout. I took a picture of a, a rye cover crop field. And you can just see the difference. So I just like to show contrasting pictures to farmers in the neighborhood. This is after a three inch rain on sea slopes in Iowa. You know, you'd have, you can't even find a reel in there, you know. And, uh, Six inch rain, never been over this highway. You know, we all have rains like that. This is a six inch rain on my right cover crop field. You just, there again, you know, just the resilience of that years and years of no-till cover crop. A lot of, it just takes that water in. This is the Farm Progress Show site in 1977. On, Waterway works well. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that's, those are, that's a flat farm. They don't think they need to no-till in there. Here again, we're back on ours, six inches of rain. Not much cover crop there, you know, but it, well, you, you just can't see any, see any reels here again. This here's at Williamsburg after this three inch rain. You just go back and forth, and I just try to show the, the contrast so farmers can see that. And what we're trying to do is, we're trying to, we know we can stop erosion, you know, now we just need to learn how to grow good crops, try to, you know, make sure that we have ear count. We got to have that yield, you know, and I, I just not going to take a back seat on yield. You know, we just have to have good, even emergence. I think some of the underlying themes of this presentation is we can plant just as early as a neighbor, and we probably can plant earlier than what they are. Um, I think over time, as we get our soils changed over, we can get good seed soil contact. We may not merge as quickly, but I want to have even emergence, and I want to just make sure that I have um, just even growth. And that's where I think no-till can fall behind. There's a rye cover crop field here. It's pretty much senesced. They hadn't been tilled like in 30 years. And you know, that's, I, I guess the question you'd have to ask here, I mean, are we behind the neighbor across the road that's tilled, you know? I don't think so. Got I mean, harvest corn in June. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we're, you know, we're trying to get good even growth and that's and it's still a challenge. Just there's third year continuous corn. And this is my last slide here. This is a Pioneer seed field that's already been planted. And uh, um, I, the one thing is, you know, we got a lot to learn. You know, we've come, we've learned a lot in the last 30 years. But, you know, if, if Dwayne would move to my county, you know, he'd be just, you talk about diversity, we're pain, and we have no diversity. <laughs> I mean, we're corn and beans, corn and beans, and um, now we've really leaped out into rye. Now we got three things. You know, now we're corn, beans, and rye. And now I'm really trying to add oats. So you can see that uh, we've got a long. Because you're close to 
Yeah, so we have some challenges. We need to get more diversity in our operation and um, we need to learn more about soil biology and the nitrogen is, is what Barry has said, you know, but um, and then we're just trying to show the difference to farmers and, and understand that that soil just doesn't change overnight. So I'll just stop here and just turn it over to the next guy and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you.